Welcome to this week's edition of The Passion of the Digital Artist. Coming to you live from the Digital Artist's back deck in beautiful Canton, Ohio, here's Jeff Mueller. Thanks, Xavier. Thank you, Jeff. How well, are you doing? I'm good. Welcome, everybody, to What Do Artists Do All Day? Otherwise known as Passion of the Digital or a Tra Digital Artist. Tra Digital tra -digi Artist. And Let's I, go over that definition real quick for people who have missed it in the tra -digital, past. Tra Digital. A combination of digitally painting, producing the digital painting onto canvas, and then using acrylics to finish the painting off. Very good. Tra Digital Artist. Very simple. That's what I do. I love doing it. Uh, I'm passionate about it. I've done it in many different ways lately. Uh, and it's culminating uh, with starting the 52 shades of blue painting process. I know the last couple of weeks I've been showing you, I'm getting really close to finishing the first one right up here or around right now while I'm talking. You can see how far I am. We'll be stripping that in. <laughs> and then uh, it really comes down to uh, this week was kind of the last three weeks, weekends, were a good kind of rest period that I had worked, done the light study, and then I had gone through and edited it down to the actual 53 images. One's the back cover of us in the rain on the last day of the study, and then there's 52 images inside the book that were all picked, and then picking them to see which ones I wanted to paint, that whole process, which took about 15 months, and it had gotten to the point where this year, we all know review, Brett Favre went into the Hall of Fame, I got my painting signed by him, and he has one of my paintings, That's, that and was that, pretty, was a, pretty that was unbelievable. And then this weekend, 52 Shades of Blue, we're moving along, but tonight I'm going to go over, we're going to cover... What's in the... We are smoking, What's under the cover we are, there? We are smoking ribs. Me, for the first time, using my firebox, my brand new smoker grill. In the past, I just had a regular grill. Firebox, cool, really know how to use it. It l allows you to adjust the temperature um, without, wrecking the, without wrecking the ribs. We are about um, in, a, in a, about a six-hour process. I am at right now at about two and a half hours and if you want to take a look here they are look at those i'm gonna hit them with my vinegar apple uh apple cider vinegar apple um spray with some olive oil get them you know moisten them up a little bit keep them moist but we're at about two and a half hours on these they look and smell delicious i uh, my wife i like to smoke them with cherry wood but what, what the process is, all right, what you got to do with, is there's this membrane. It's not fat. This has already been stripped off the, the membrane. And if you get in there, and you kind of get it get up like that, and you can kind of see, you don't want to take off any meat, but you want to just get this, this membrane. And then once you get the membrane, that membrane starting to come up. There. Look at, see how the membrane starts to come up. And then when I get it all, so. You know, I start going back the other. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see it. This is what you're looking for right here. And then just toss that. There we go. All three racks are ready. What I like to do with three is I have a different set of spices for each one. And what you do is you need to, you can use the yellow mustard or I've got a organic yellow mustard, but the yellow mustard itself is just a base to have the rub. Now what you do is you put it on. Put a little bit of yellow on there. The mustard is the base for the rub, so you don't. And because it's a base, it's not for it's not too much for taste. But I like to put on 
I'm gonna put on a little of this Birdman's ballpark mustard, a brown mustard in. You gotta do it on both sides. But what happens is, I start with the back. Once you got that on, you just rub it in. Rub it in, get it on both the ends. Get that, just get that mustard rubbed in. I Same thing on each one. And we got it on this one too. Get that mustard in. Hey bud. You got the little one over there watching. Now, what that does is it prepares it for the different rubs. Sats. Now, I've got this, I call it Barbecue 3000. I get my um, my rubs from Penzies, and you just basically cover it. You want to give it a good cover on that. There's the one side. Now, I've got this Galena Street that I put on. And that's the same thing. This is a little bit. Now these two are going to have the smoke rings because the the red of the of the rub will get in. So then you sprinkle the barbecue rub so that uh, it, it, it'll have a red. It'll be reddish. And as you're doing it, you give it a nice good coat. You don't coat it too much, but you make sure you have coverage on the front and the back. Once you once you're done with that, they're ready to be put onto the grill or onto the smoker. Now the smoker. I like to smoke, and most people like to smoke between 235 and 250. I sometimes will go up to, to probably right around 2, 245, 245 to 260. Uh, it, it'll speed up the process just a little bit, uh, and I've had good results. Now, I like cherry wood. You can smoke with mesquite. You can smoke with the other hardwoods and whatnot. So cherry wood adds like a sweeter taste to the ribs. Now that brings us to, once you put them on, you basically keep um, the firebox, if you want to take a look at the firebox, the firebox in there, you just have the fire burning and there's some smoldering and that's the cherry wood smoking. And you watch the temperature. Right now the temperature um, is about 235. Um, it'll go up a little bit because I had just opened that, that allows for that. Uh, you have control. Um, if you need it to be hotter, you open it up and then you just keep adding your cherry wood as you go along. Uh, some people like to do uh, charcoal and then they they add the wood the, the cherry wood uh, wet and it gives but I like to do it like this where you just keep adding the cherry wood a bag will take you the full seven and a half hours there's just like a little you could see over there the little plastic bag now after three hours you take it take the ribs back in and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about it but I'm gonna because it's not been done I'll record that and show it to you right around 250 We've been uh, right around between 235, 245, 250 for about three hours now. I've, I've put on my, my mist a couple times. I've misted it. And now we're going to take and look at those babies. They're ready to go. So I'm going to take them off one at a time. I think I could get two. Let's see if I can get two in at once. Yeah, I can. I'll get these two in first. And this is the Galena. And what we got is some perfect, some beautiful ribs here. Look at that. Look at the redness and how far we are. Let's go. We'll get this, these two in, and then we'll come back out and get the last one. So now we got the three slabs of ribs. They're all pretty much, and now we start the, the tenderizing process. They're, they're close. They've done, they're, they're really, the meat is getting close. It's breaking down. And so the first thing, a lot of people use margarine, and I use, I like to use butter. And I use about, for this part, I like to use butter, and all you do is get some butter, and it's been sitting room temperature. What I do is I take the butter out when, I'll take the butter out when I start uh, smoking the ribs so that the, so it just melts on like that. That puts up a, a base. Get another piece for this side. Don't, and really, in this case, and you see I have them on tin foil because we're gonna wrap these in tin foil, but you see on the first, on the back end, I, I, I'm not, but don't, um, don't skimp on the butter. The butter, you wanna really get that in there, get that base in there. And then 
same thing here you can see get that butter in that butter now people use margarine but i'm not I, i'm not a fan of margarine one i don't like margarine and some people swear by margarine parquet but i just i'm not going to eat it and i've had huge success with the butter so now that we got the butter got to sprinkle on the brown sugar now brown sugar gets a little tricky everybody knows you gotta break it up here a little bit but you want it with the brown sugar now this is your you know same thing with the brown sugar get it in there with the Brown sugar is very important. This is brown. All right. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of honey. Now honey is a secret. And the honey on the back end. so good same thing on this side hit that butter back onto the butter I like to use with three I usually use two sticks I put a little bit more butter on this side this could be like a, a pressure cooker to some extent I'm gonna wrap these once I get I'm gonna hit that brown sugar again Give it a nice coat, break that up. All right, there we go again. We got the brown sugar on. Now, once again, hit that honey. Honey is the money. So this is the six, it took, I use a, a, a half a jar on each. Now, we're gonna flip it one more time over. Make sure that that's face down. I like to get the caramelized from the other one picked up, and then they're face down. All right, so I'm gonna do my first part. Now, key to this is no holes in the tin foil. You don't wanna have those bones break through. So each one, I wrap up in the first layer. Right now I still have the, the flame going. I still got the flame going out there. Still got it sitting at two, 240. Just make sure that I don't leak. one more time but I should do it you don't have to skip on that tin foil the tin foil for two hours it's gonna cook that brown sugar and that honey right into the meat it's gonna caramelize while breaking down the ribs get that flame back up going put that baby on we got three of them going and now it's ready to go for another two hours put some more of that cherry wood at this point now that they're wrapped the cherry wood isn't going to be filtering as much so what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of because I was I started with some charcoal and I'll finish it with some charcoal because now it's not as important it's not as important anymore as far as the, the taste of the cherry because the 
that the heat is what's important at this point. All right, there we go. We got it running. That should take me up to, now that that's in there, gets going a little bit, it'll take it right back up to 235. You put those ribs back on then for two more hours. And that brown sugar, that butter, and that honey all melt in. And after the two hours is up, you take it off. We're back. Uh, these have been on for another two hours. What I want to do is open up the, the tin foil and show you the, the liquid goodness that it was soaking in because they're face down like that. As you open this up, look at that. Look at what those ribs have done. See that right there? Look at that. That all that. Now comes the last part. Got to get that baby out. Flip it over. Maintaining it, it wants to break apart because they are done. But what we're gonna do is gonna hit them with the barbecue sauce. I like sweet baby rays. It's just a personal preference. Everybody, whatever barbecue sauce you want. But when you smoke ribs with barbecue sauce, you put it on, you get it in there, you get that barbecue sauce on. But it's not like when you're grilling because you're slow roasting these ribs. And if you look, they're ready. It's like they're gonna pop off the bone. They're just got a little bit longer, but that's just perfect, tender, beautiful ribs. Go flip that one. Flip it over. You can see the, the brown sauce that was soaking in. Come on, let's flip this baby. Beautiful. Oh my God. Anyways, put that on, and we're gonna put them on. We're gonna do this one at a time. What happens is you get all that that juice there, and I like to put the sauce on but then I'll take a little bit it's just a lot of that a lot of that juice is just oh it's unbelievable honey is the money Who's coming come on Avers we're gonna put that back on there we go put them on face up like that this one started you gotta do the same thing with the other ones once you rub your barbecue sauce on you put them back onto the grill for about a half hour back onto the smoker for a half hour. That is award-winning ribs, my friend. That is how you smoke some award-winning winning ribs. Back, they're finished. We're sitting about 215, which was fine. Caramelize that final caramelizing cherry smoking rib experience. Pull this baby off. Ooh, it just wants to fall apart. That's what you want in your ribs. Fall apart. Thing right here. Just want to fall apart. Where the hell that was. There they are. Let's bring them in. Here we are. Let me look. Breaks off. Tender. Fall off the bone. You've got your classic red smoke ring right there. Let's see about this one. Perfectly done. And there's your, there it is right around the, the smoke ring right there. Perfectly done and I'm sure this side probably illustrates it a little bit more. Meatier, beefier. Yep. Perfect, perfect baby back ribs. Glad that you guys were along for the ride. All that's left is to eat the wonderfulness. Sounds and delicious. tonight at about 1 o'clock in the morning, 
I will have finished my ribs. And are you going to partake of them at well, one o'clock in the morning? Well, I'll probably taste one, but yeah. it's for. T but I've been, I was I was making these for tomorrow. Okay, so, so how will you store them between one o'clock in the morning uh, and I'll, tomorrow at six o'clock in the evening? Let's say. I was thinking that I'd wrap them back up into the tin foil and put them in the uh, just put them in the oven, you know, just to sit in there a little bit, you know, whatever. They're not going to cook, but they're going to they're going to keep their you know, they'll they'll just keep that that meat meat will break down a little more. It sounds awesome, Jeff. So that's where we're at with that. Uh, who who thought how to smoke ribs would be a part of what does an artist do? But that's what I do. That's in a lot of times in between. I head off over all of this um, the couple. You know, at at one point or another, I'll be in front of the computer painting away. Uh, that's kind of what you can do when you're smoking ribs. Smoking ribs is is a painter's friend. Whether you're painting uh, conventionally or you're painting digitally, you got a lot of time in between. You just got to be checking, making sure. Problems. Pretty awesome, Jeff. So, you got anything else to throw in there, Xavier? Viva Las Vegas. <laughs> I uh, talk about things not planning on happening. I thought I was through with vacations this year, and that's not the case. Ah. In a couple weeks, I'm going to be going out to Vegas for three nights. Okay, excellent. Because I'm Xavier, and that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs>